The House will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we pray for your wisdom, guidance, and strength as we seek to govern all who live in Minnesota. Strengthen our resolve to cooperate and collaborate, stir in each heart the desire to build each other up and to speak to each other in ways that are kind and true. Help us to build a state where no parent has to put a child to bed who is hungry and no person has to live without adequate shelter. Help us to listen to each other well as we work together to build a community where everyone can live in safety and with dignity. We commend this state and this assembly to your merciful care, that being guided by your spirit, we may walk in your ways and live in your peace. Fill each representative with your love and compassion and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve the people of this great state. In your sovereign name we pray, amen. amen. The chaplain for today is Pastor Elizabeth Felt from Advent Lutheran Church in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The clerk will take the roll. Members, please vote. I don't know what I don't know what they have. Will the clerk please call the member uh, who is voting remotely? Who is it? Keel. Keel. Keel present. The clerk will close the roll. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. <clears throat> Journal of the House, 92nd day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Thursday, March 14th, 2024. If there's no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Is this a comparison report? Nope. Comparison reports.
reports of standing committee. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is on your desk and online. If there's no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. Second reading, House File number 3550. Second reading. Second reading, House File 3650. Second reading. Second reading, House File 3678. Second reading. Second reading, House File 3812. Second reading. Second reading, House File 4048. Second reading. Second reading, House File 4050. Second reading. Second reading, House File 4083. Second reading. Second reading, House File 4271. Second reading. Second reading, House File 4362. Second reading. Second reading, House File 4400. Second reading. Second reading House Law 4507. Second reading. Second reading House Law 4515. Second reading. And second reading House Law 4717. Second reading. Introduction of bills. The following House files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House Files 4977 through 5035. First reading, House File 4977 through 5035. Yes. Got it. The first bill on the calendar for today is House File 3769. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 3769, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to taxation, corporate franchise. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from St. Louis, Representative Lissagard. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, House file 3769 is a straightforward bill that fixes the remaining issue from the 2023 uh, tax bill. The bill moves the effective date of the net operating loss change in 2023 tax bill to um, tax year 2023 to tax year 2024. The cost of the bill is $14.8 million. It's one-time money out of the general fund. I'd like to uh, thank Lee Davis and uh, Chair Gomez for their work on this, and that's all it is. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House file number 3769. Third reading. <clears throat> Discussions to the bill. Representative Davids. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, I would like to thank Chair Liz Lagarde uh, and Chair Gomez uh, for getting this done. This is uh, one of the portions of the correction bill that we did earlier this year. Uh, this is very much needed, uh, and I thank them for their support. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Further discussion? Representative Lissagard. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker. I just think it's really important for this body to keep its word. We all voted on this last year, and this will um, seal the deal and uh, keep our word. Thank you. Please vote green. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. Members, please vote. Will the clerk please call the names of the members voting remotely? <clears throat> okay, Keel. Keel, aye. Keel votes aye. The clerk will close the roll.
There being 130 yeas and zero nays, the bill is passed and its titled agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 3613. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 3613, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to transportation, providing for clarifications on forecasted Metro Mobility funding, the first engrossment. I recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Hornstein. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Uh, this bill is a uh, technical correction to uh, session law we passed in uh, 2021. This was a floor amendment from Representative Kosnick, so I was pleased that this is, uh, has bipartisan support back then, and I hope again today. Um, so we enacted a requirement for MMB to include in each economic forecast a general fund obligation uh, for the annual net costs for Metro Mobility, which is a uh, vital uh, transportation service here in this area uh, for people with disabilities and, and others that, that need this assistance. Uh, so this bill modifies the session law uh, to instead be effective on July 1st, 2023, and requires Metro Mobility obligations to first be forecast uh, the beginning of 2023 for, uh, forecast. So it just switches the date, and I would ask the body for your support. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House Hall number 3613. Third reading. Discussion. The member from Waseca, Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Hornstein, for bringing this forward. Uh, this is a, one of those bills that we need to, to kind of fix and get it squared away from what the intent was. I have some a um, uh, little bit of concerns in the fact that this kind of puts it on, on autopilot in regards to the cost. However, this is a mandated program. The federal government requires us to do, uh, requires it to be funded as well. And it's something that we need to create a stable funding source for it into the future. And this um, it really is something that we've talked about for many years, and I think it is a, a possible, uh, a positive piece. So again, thank you for the support, and I would certainly uh, vote yes on the bill. The member from Olmstead, Representative Quam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would uh, Chair Hornstein yield to a question? Chair Hornstein will yield for a question. Representative Quam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and Chair Hornstein, looking at the future years out, you know, and the increase in the cost, um, when can we see the logistics app and software utilized to decrease the, uh, you know, inefficiencies we currently have? I know you've got multiple uh, occurrences of trying to test that for microtransit, but I was just curious on that because I think that's important too. Representative Hornstein. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Quam, it's very interesting you asked that question because, in fact, last night I was at a training. Uh, pardon me, um, Representative Pulaski was billed as a mock legislature. Uh, and um, uh, someone came up and asked me uh, that very question, Representative Quam. And um, so I think that the uh, Metro Mobility, and we had a number of people there, Representative uh, Edelson was there, Representative Baker was there. Um, but I think the users of Metro Mobility are um, very interested in, uh, in having that. Um, it's a good question. I will ask uh, Met Council the next time I see him, because I have not heard when that uh, application will be available. But clearly, uh, the Metro Mobility users are tracking with you, Representative Kwong. Further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, Representative Hornstein, did you have any closing remarks before we take the roll? Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you. Uh, and I appreciate, again, Representative Petersburg's comments. Uh, this is a very, very essential service, and uh, I I'm glad that uh, we're able to make this technical change today. The clerk will take the roll.
Will the clerk please call the names of the members voting remotely? Mm. Keel. Keel votes aye. The clerk will close the roll. There being 106 yeas and 23 nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there is no objection, we will take action on these motions. Hearing no objections, the motions prevail. Purcell moves that House File Number 4698 be recalled from the Committee on Agriculture, Finance, and Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, Finance, and Policy. The member from Rice, Representative Purcell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That is my motion. House File 4698 uh, was incorrectly referred to the Agriculture Committee and needs to go to Environment and Natural Resources. The bill is... Um, looking at the uh, animal units and uh, environmental impact statement. And I've talked to both chairs, and they are uh, OK with this change. Thank you, Representative Purcell. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, say nay. No. The motion prevails. Berg moves that House File Number 4818 be recalled from the Committee on Transportation, Finance, and Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Labor and Industry, Finance, and Policy. The member from Dakota, Representative Berg. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, House File 4818 uh, talks about health care uh, for our Minneapolis airport workers. Um, I have spoken to both chairs, and they agree, and that is my motion. Discussion. Uh, Representative Nash, the member from Carver. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm looking for Chair Clavorn. Apparently, she's not here. I'm just trying to find out why, Madam Speaker, and maybe the author of the motion would uh, answer this why. Um, a bill that is wholly within the chapter of 473 of law is not going to state government finance. Representative Purcell? Since Representative Cleveland is not here, is there any? Oh, I'm sorry, Representative Berg, my apologies. Representative Berg. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative Nash. Um, there was much discussion about the jurisdiction of this bill, and it was determined that the MAC does not fall under state government. Um, that was my impression and the information I have. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, uh, members, Chapter 473 is wholly within the purview of state government finance. Uh, it is metropolitan government. It is state government. It is wholly within the purview of the state government finance committee. So I would make the motion uh, to refer it to state government finance before it goes anywhere else. You got that. Representative Berg. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, so this founding happened with nonpartisan legal, um, and I was just informed that once it um, makes it stop in labor, well, it may then to come to stake up. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and Representative Berg, I appreciate that, but may make a stop in state government finance. That's a troublesome phrase because we, we may also be done early. We may also get home before the sun is down, and we may also all have snacks later on, but that may not become reality. So what I'm, what I'm trying to make a point of here, members, is state government finance has purview over all, the entirety of Chapter 473. Not bits and pieces, not selected pieces, not things that we like, things that we don't like, or things that we'd like to move along their way so that they don't come before the proper committees of jurisdiction. So I'm, I'm deeply troubled that uh, we wouldn't make sure that that was the first 
because it usually is referred to the committee that has the first level of jurisdiction. Uh, but Representative Berg, uh, can I get your assurance that you will uh, make sure that it goes to state government finance, if she would yield? She will yield, Representative Berg. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Semantics are fun, so I will assure that it comes to state gov. Representative Nash. Well, my work here is done. <laughs> the member from Wasika, Representative Petersburg. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I, I'm in support of the motion leaving transportation at this point because I was trying to figure out why we had possession of it in the first place other than it had to do with the Metropolitan Airports Commission, but it doesn't have anything to do with their side of transportation. Instead, it actually talks about labor relations and, and all of the uh, employee issues that really we thought DEED ought to be responsible for. So I think it's appropriate for it to go to other committees that has better jurisdiction and have it voted out with, with there. Um, in, in addition to that, it has where it has no impact in regards to our actual state budget, it does have a huge local impact uh, around the community as well. Again, something that's outside the purview of transportation. So it makes sense for it not to, to go out there, and I hope that gets squared away. But my question uh, for Representative Berg, if she knows, if MAC is still stayed in as a, the enforcement area, would it then come back to transportation or would it stay uh, just in where it's at? Representative Petersburg, are you asking Representative Berg to yield? I am sorry, that is correct. If she would Representative answer Berg her question. will yield. Representative Berg. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you for the question, Representative Petersburg. Um, no, it will not be coming back to transportation. Uh, Representative Petersburg. Thank you for that clarification. Again, I would just reemphasize that this should be a responsibility of being enforced by DEED and others that deal with labor and with health insurances and so forth, and it should not really be responsibility of uh, the Airports Commission, which is supposed to be re uh, resignated to just helping with airlines and moving things around. So thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, <clears throat> nay. The motion does prevail. Current moves at House Bill number 4875 be recalled from the Committee on Human Services Finance and be referred to the Committee on Health, Finance, and Policy. The member from Ramsey, Representative Curran. Thank you, Speaker. That is my motion. House File 4875 is a bill to fund a community care hub that was initially sent to Human Services Finance uh, but should be referred to Health Committee instead. So that is what I ask members to vote for. Thank you. Discussion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, nay? The motion does prevail. Scott moves that House Bill number 4579 be returned to its author. The member from Anoka, Representative Scott. Winners. Speaker Pro Tem. <laughs> Sorry, I'm again giving a hard time over here. Um, House file 4579, I just been pulling that back to me. Um, it needs more work with stakeholders, and so that's the reason for, for pulling it back. Appreciate your support. Discussion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. aye. Uh, any opposed, nay. And the motion prevails. Announcements. The member from Sherburn, Representative Wolgamont. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. It is my great honor to invite you to St. Cloud Area Evening at the Capitol. It is happening tomorrow, Tuesday, March 19th, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Radisson Hotel in downtown St. Paul. It will be a fun, relaxing evening of conversation and networking with business leaders from the nitty-gritty Granite City of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Eddie Ferner announces. Representative Igo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to also announce an event that is going to be taking place tomorrow from 5.30 to 8.30. It's the Better in Our Backyard first annual legislative reception. So that's an organization from northern Minnesota that's now working with states across the nation on about how we can have uh, thoughtful and fruitful discussions around how we can do things the best way possible with responsible and productive business uh, that's going to make Minnesota a leader. Uh, we're going to be talking about things from permitting reform to just good business as a whole. I look forward to seeing as many people there tomorrow from 5.30 to 8.30 at 3.17 on Park. The member from Stearns, Representative Perryman. Thank you. 
um, leader or chair, whatever. I'm, right now, I'm so excited to be able to announce because there's so many things going on tomorrow night. I go, uh, represent a Welgamon. I think there's other things, but I would like to personally, personally for me, invite you to the St. Cloud uh, Chamber of Commerce event tomorrow night from 5 to 7, as Representative Welgamont said, and it's guaranteed to be a lot of fun and excitement. It'll be a lot of talk that we can spread across tomorrow, the next day. So thank you for bearing with me to make the same announcement as we make many announcements. Thank you. The member from Wright, Representative McDonald. Madam Speaker, thank you for saving the best for the last. Yesterday, we celebrated St. Patrick's Day in the country in the state and all over the world. So uh, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, uh, I guess I'm the official uh, Irish legislator. I know there's many more, but uh, I do receive the information from Senator Mark Daly from Ireland. He's in the Senate of Ireland. So anyway, he sent a letter to all of us, and I'd like to read just a portion of it in honor of St. Patrick's Day. He is also the 24th chair of the Senate of Ireland. The uh, particular uh, uh, organization is the American Irish State Legislators Caucus and is to fuel great relations between the great country of Ireland, the Irish people, and this beautiful country of America. And he states, Dear friends, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, he is delighted to share with us the St. Patrick's Day package, which can be used to host an event leading up or on St. Patrick's Day. We will also receive a certificate that is uh, honoring uh, the legislators, the uh, American Irish St. Patrick's Day Caucus, Legislative Caucus, and also for those who are Irish, those who wish they were Irish, and those who still want to be Irish. He has given us some lapel pins. So I have 31 lapel pins for my fellow colleagues here who want to be Irish for the day. The first one, though, is going to be reserved for Mr. Patrick Duffy Murphy, though, and then everybody else can get their St. Patrick's Day pen in the back. So uh, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I wish you all the best. And these will be in the back for those who want to celebrate a little bit St. Patrick's Day and better late than never. Madam Speaker. Any further announcements? Oh, Re Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and members. And you know, I, I want to make a confession that I've been trying to hide for years. Uh, I believe Growing up, I was 75% Norwegian, 25% Swede, and then a DNA test came back and my worst fears were realized. Those dang Swedish Vikings, I'm 2% Irish. Representative Long. Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 12.10 p.m. Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Representative Long moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 12.10 p.m. on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. The motion prevails. Representative Long. Madam Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Long moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. The motion prevails, and the House stands adjourned until 12.10 p.m. on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024.